Hi, welcome to Nauru, the least visited country on this planet. I'm here. It's only 200 people make it here a year. And I'm one of those 200. And there's a couple people behind me that are make up the other three. Anyway, it's so good to be here. I, I thought this place was gonna be not so good, but I like it. Uh, there's not, it's not very big. There's not a lot to do here. But look at this crazy beach behind me. Anyway, this uh, country we're gonna have a look at it today. I've got a car, we're gonna drive around it. It only takes an hour to drive around the entire country. It's the third smallest country in the world. And uh, we're gonna see what this place is all about. So stick with me on this edition of The Traveling Wizard. Besides the crazy limestone formations dotting the beach, we also found some Japanese bunkers left over from World War II. But to find the big guns, we had to enlist the help of a local and head to the middle of the island. The world's least visited country also has some of the rarest license plates in the world, so I couldn't help but grab one. License plates don't grow on trees, they grow on cars. So many license plates, such little time. Well, after about 10 minutes walk, we finally found what we'd been looking for. And I don't think we could have found it on our own. Well, we made it to the Japanese guns. Here they are, in the middle of nowhere. Not too far from the guns was the Makwa Well, a place the Japanese used to use for fresh water and to hide. All right, here it is, Makwa Cave. Um, they used to have a post here uh, that goes up to the this, bunkers. This is the Japanese? Yeah, these are the Japanese bunkers. If you go up there, there are some bunkers there that connects to this cave. So they got water here and yeah. then this, uh, you could... And they were here until, uh, what, the uh, Americans came? Um, yes, they were here in 1942 to 1944. Nauru definitely has a shortage of good restaurants. But really, the only one that we liked was this one here called the Bay Restaurant. And while we were there, we met the owner, Ken Oppenheim. That's Ken. No, not that guy. The guy pulling up on a boat. He invited us to go fishing with him the next day. How awesome is that? After we'd pull, pulled a few skipjacks out of the ocean, Ken took us around the entire island. That's it. We rode around the entire country in his boat. Went to the old phosphate plants, the new port, and then finally he dropped us off where we started. So this island really got put on the map about 125 years ago with the discovery of phosphorus, or phosphate I mean, and uh, which is basically bird shit. <laughs> and uh, tons and tons and tons of it. They say that they've, they've taken so much here that if you line up trucks full of phosphate from LA to New York and back, that's how much full of phosphate. It's unlikely you'll ever get lost driving around Nauru, but if you do, just follow the pigs. You never know where you might end up. <laughs> 